the universe is expanding faster than the ordinary laws of physics can account for. This was realized a year and a half ago by one team of astrophysicists. They handed it on to a second team. They confirmed it. They handed it on to a third. They confirmed it. And a very counterintuitive picture of things is emerging. The universe is not going to fall back on itself in some grand crunch billions of years hence. Rather, the universe is going to expand forever, forever. But here's the kicker, faster and faster and faster, forever, with no barriers and no limitation. Someone may say, well, what about the speed of light? Ah, the speed of light? does not cover the law uh, of uh, the cosmological constant because this law is not saying that matter is moving apart faster and faster. If that were the case, the relativistic physics would put a speed limit on it. It's saying that space itself is expanding faster and faster. This is a quality of empty space. The universe that comes into focus with this law in hand is a universe that in only a couple or three billion years will begin to lose contact with large parts of itself because they will be moving apart at greater than relativistic speed. So it turns out there is a cosmic law which has built into itself this idea of an endless acceleration toward infinity. Ladies and gentlemen. Alan, it's a possibility, isn't it? The very word secrecy is repugnant. Secrets. In a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically Wake opposed up. to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. We decided long ago that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweigh the dangers constant extreme danger which are cited to justify it even today there is little value in opposing the threat of a closed society by imitating its arbitrary restrictions even today there is little value in ensuring the survival of our nation if our traditions do not survive with it and there is very grave danger extreme danger that an announced need for increased security. What the hell is going on? This is Conspiracy Queries with Alan Carr. Will be seized upon by those anxious to expand its meaning to the very limits of official censorship and concealment. That I do not intend to permit to the extent that it's in my control. You're crazy. And no officials, high or low, civilian or military, should interpret my words here tonight as an excuse to censor the news, to stifle dissent, cover up our mistakes. Isn't the Pentagon suspicious that all the buildings would blow up? Or to withhold from the press and the public. I think you're just looking at things for the first time. The facts they deserve to know. You've had your whole fucking life to think things over. What good's a few minutes more gonna do you now? The facts they deserve to know. They deserve to know. Deserve to know. Deserve 
deserve to know. Welcome to Welcome to Green Crush Conspiracy Queries with Alan Park. Nice to be broadcasting today. Facts they deserve to know. Boom! Hey, we're back. We're live. I always use that lead-in because it went so well that time, episode twenty-three. It's been a, um, it's been something for us. We have enjoyed using it. All right, Cause, is that okay? Is it okay to say that? All right, I'm gonna try to put something else on in the background because ah, I need a little quiet and peace. We do broadcast from two three four King Street East, the uh, Pacific Junction Hotel. And it can get noisy because it's very fun in here. And a lot of people come in. There's a particularly <laughs> robust uh, gathering of fellas this afternoon. And uh, they're making a lot of noise. So it's easier for me to do the show with this. Uh, not so loud. There we go. Okay, just enough to wash them out. Uh, you know, in a polite way. So uh, listen, this is... Um, something I have to tell you is that when injustice becomes law, resistance becomes duty. Thank you, Henry David Thoreau, or was it Thomas Jefferson? I don't know. What matters is it is true, and I am that. For saving my life with cannabis and sharing how I did it, that's Green Crush, and that's the duty that I have. Yeah, I said duty. In the best way I know how to live that duty is to get this word out. Um... To as many people that are willing to listen as possible. I know there's all kinds of people don't want to listen. I heard a guy telling me today he believes his doctor 100% that doesn't believe me. I shouldn't have done what I did. I was wrong to uh, go ahead without any kind of uh, prognosis from a doctor. Well, they just said, you're done. There's not much we can do. So, um, you know, that's why I'm not too worried about, about, what, uh, about what that's all about. Now, what happened here? Gee whiz. What is going on? See, that's what I mean. That's why 23 was so smooth, and now this one's not so smooth. Uh, but that's okay. We normally have, uh, we always have guests uh, on the show that have something to do with cannabis. And, uh, of course, that's the name of the show, Green Crush. Green being the cannabis crush. What it can do to your ill health. And in my case, well, let me get to it. Um, Green Crush, this is comedy episode number comedy. All right, that's, we normally... Numeralize our shows. Not doing that today. This is comedy, and conspiracy queries number is also comedy. So that's that's the show that was born because um, you know conspiracy queries because some people still think that uh, you know it's a bit of a stretch there that they think, but they do think it's the law, and that we have to go along with it. And and like Thoreau or was it Jefferson up there says, um, not on my watch, buddy. Not if it's a shit law. Uh, no thanks. I'm done complaining about it in a way where I'm just complaining about it. I'm I'm out here telling people, you know, here's where the problems are. I know there's a lot of people thrilled that Canada's, oh, they're going to make it legal this year. Oh, they're finally doing it. Oh, oh. Well, okay. So you're celebrating. You don't know what you're talking about. Again, just after the show last week, I had a conversation with a fantastic young fella here at the uh, at the place. He said, you really think there's going to be problems after this? I thought it would be great because now it's all legal. And I explained a few of the problems. He, oh, no, that's not going to happen. He says, those, those arrests won't be made on that new series of laws they just drew up. And then he backs down and says, well, you know, I didn't know all that stuff. Oh, okay. So then don't be surprised when I tell you about it, because I know about all that stuff. What else do you think I'm doing? Not much. Just researching this stuff. And because it, you know, had, I had my life was, you know, wrapped around this issue, folks. It's not that nuts to get on, get on board something that had helped turn you around. I was given no medical option. I found this one. I took it. It worked. I'm telling people. That's really, that's the whole, that's the five second pitch on the show. But won't you come on for a, um, a visit? Canada's architect of oppressive, nonsensical rules there, Bill Blair. Won't you come on here, please? It would be great. But like I said, Bill Blair, the guy that put these laws together, he's a G20 criminal. He is. He's a rights abuser, got away with it. Well, people don't seem to care. 
And, uh, that's okay. You can be a rights abuser and design the new cannabis laws of any nation. That doesn't seem to be outrageous, right? That's not a problem. But particularly when there's no victim and no crime, you always have to question the laws that are allegedly placed above you. And if that law exists to help disputes between property holders, injury uh, makers and receivers, fantastic. Otherwise, it's not really a law. And if I want to partake of this plant and I'm getting medical results that, you know, surprise others, well, t t that's fantastic. That's what I get to do. Uh, that's what I'm going to do. That's what I've been doing, and I'm going to keep on doing it. But come on, Bill Blair, cup of tea and a fireside chat over why you say I'm a criminal for knowing and doing this and why you're a great man for abusing rights of G20, then getting away with it, and then abusing rights of people who will continue after your little fairy tale of bullshit laws get thrown together like some Jurassic Park dinosaur barfing up some village he just ate into the wind and hoping it lands in the shape of a building. But it's not going to go like that, Bill. We're not going to stop doing the things that we already know how to do properly. Despite your blather. God, get, a, get some... Get a surgeon to take a look at that eye of yours, too. It looks like you've artfully draped a couple of pieces of uh, well-shaven bacon down there. Got some strange business going on with your eyes. I wouldn't normally make fun of a man's appearance, but when the man's job is an adjunct to the health parliamentary sector secretary of the country, you don't have to look like a sack of shit and get away with that law. That ruling, that series of rulings, you kind of got to look good. You know, it's like having the fashion coordinator come in wearing a sack. You know, the guy's got to wear clothes or she's got to look snazzy. Can't just come strolling in here. I'm the fashion person and you look like a heap of, you know, garbage clothes. Something people are throwing out. That's what these series of laws look like. That they're putting together, they put together for us. Had a bunch of idiot senators debating over them. <sighs> anyway, nonsensical rules. So come on down, Bill. Anytime it's it's open for you. Um, this is for immediate release. Uh, we we had a um, we had a person today, Sean McAleese. I was in touch with him yesterday. He was in Ottawa today at ten thirty, and um, apparently. Um, they were saying, this is not legalization, so stop calling it that. Sean McAleese is a representative of, representative from, um, what's it called? Patients Lives Matter. This is a loose affiliation of cannabis users, activists, and industry workers. wonder if any of them were actually patients, such as myself. We'll hold a press conference today. They held it at 1030. It was a half an hour at Parliament Hill to address the many glaring shortcomings Thank God I'm not the only one that sees this. Of the new cannabis bills that recently became law. This is not the legalization we fought for, said Sean McAleys. Frankly, it's an insult. We wanted free market stores, lounges for consumption, and freedom from police coercion and intrusion. <laughs> you don't get to have that when a cop actually drafts the architecture of the laws. But this is obviously what we're fighting. What we got instead is over 35 new ways to get busted. I think it's 45 laws in total. Provincial monopolies, nonsensical driving restrictions, propaganda, and sentences so obscene that defy reason. Every Canadian, cannabis users and non-users alike, should be appalled at what has happened. And so should you foreign listeners in different countries that are looking on Canada as the fantastic new place that just went legal and you think it's wonderful. It's not. It's an inch forward and a couple of kilometers or perhaps miles, if you're listening in the States, backwards. Yeah. Yeah. Every Canadian, cannabis and non-cannabis users alike, should be appalled at what's happened. They will be the ones paying for this incoherent and convoluted mess of a law. Okay, well, while most Green Crush episodes focus on the comedy of errors, also known as legalization and fact omission and suppression, 
that has rolled across the decades of enough people being sleepy enough to allow ourselves to relinquish our own control to a series of simpering sycophants who claim authority they don't have to rule against the will of people who do. <laughs> it's amazing. But uh, check this out. This is in Vice. This just uh, came out uh, a couple of days ago. Or maybe even today. Canada's new impaired driving laws give cops a terrifying amount of power. Completely sober drivers could end up with criminal records. Why are you so upset about what's happening with cannabis? I don't know. I thought you would be happy they're making it legal. Because of all this bullshit, stupid. Pay attention, please. Stop telling me you know it's going to be okay when you don't know anything and you haven't studied anything and you haven't tried it for your own accord or for your own health reasons. You don't really know. You haven't really read about it. And you thought Trudeau was good looking. And now you think it's going to be great. All eyes were on the passing of the Cannabis Act last week here in Canada, which will make it legal to buy rec weed in Canada. I mean rec. When you buy it from the government, it's, it's wrecked. It's no good. In Canada on October 17th, but the government also passed its impaired driving bill. One that gives police sweeping new powers, which is all they're really fit to do. You know, get a broom and clean up. And, and do that behind those fucking horses that keep dropping shit everywhere. I don't understand why we're always paying tickets for a dog leaving a load somewhere. And some cop's got a fucking Clydesdale he can leave a big brown stripe down the middle of Young Street. Anyway, Bill C-46 creates new offenses for people who drive with a certain amount of THC in their system. And by certain, they mean almost non-existent. It toughens up the rules around drinking and driving. While that may sound like a good thing, no one wants dangerous drivers on the road, true. Experts argue several parts of the bill are unconstitutional and will trample on the rights of citizens. Who could we get to draw up such a law? I know the big fat cop that was at the head of Toronto when G20 came to town and abused all of our rights then and has gotten away with it ever since. Cops are going to be able to demand a breathalyzer from anyone without reasonable suspicion of impairment. Sorry, what? Previously, cops needed reasonable suspicion in order to make a... You gotta spell things better, Vice. Is order to make a driver... In order to make a driver take a breathalyzer test to check for alcohol impairment, reasonable suspicion might include swerving and erratic driving. Slurred speech, bloodshot eyes, the smell of liquor. That's always a good tip-off for cannabis. Or visible alcohol in the car. Bill C-46 allows them to randomly demand a breathalyzer from any driver without a specific reason. The bar for police to have you blow into a roadside device is very low, says Grant Gottgetro. Got get, got get got get I'm sorry. A retired West Vancouver police officer. That seems arbitrary to get randomly pulled over, and I think there's a potential for it to be abused because police are human. This is a cop saying this. Uh, Gottgetro said cops could get target someone because of the color of their skin. Oh, they could do that, could they? You mean they'll continue to do that? More so. Or if the person has a nice car. Let's say you went out and got yourself a nice car. All of a sudden, probably you're smoking dope. Probably we can pull you over. Probably I can make you blow into this without any kind of... What kind of fucking place are we living in now? Oh, I need to go home and rent The Lives of Others. It's a great film, and I think it's happening today right now at this moment. Look it up, The Lives of Others, Rotten Tomatoes. Cannabis lawyer Jack Lloyd also said people of color will be disproportionately subjected to random stops. He told, okay, Vice, you guys need to hire a proofreader, okay? I can't be doing this on the fly. There's like nine mistakes per paragraph here. He told Vice this aspect of the bill will likely be challenged on the grounds it's unconstitutional. Likely? Fucking arrest me. It could be considered unreasonable search and seizure, he said, and the law itself has no rational connection to, the effectively, cur to effectively curving the behavior it's purportedly trying to stop. They don't have any proof of this. I've been through this a lot of times. Listen to the show. Go back and listen to it again. I'm getting kind of nuts with this. We're going to get Andy on soon because this is... Um this is the kind of stuff we're listening to. On the one hand, ridiculous laws. On the other hand, people not paying attention going, oh, I think that's going to be interesting for you. And then actually, it's not interesting. It's more, it's more nightmarish than interesting. But we always examine the creative here on the show. And, and so how many of our Green Crush guests so far and yet to come have taken difficult circumstances and through using cannabis have created a better life for themselves and oftentimes many people around them? 
This does not include people who say cannabis only makes you lazy. Well, they're lazy not doing their homework and just saying that. How ironic. But, um, you know, people get upset about it. They say, well, it's the law, you know. You know, the law, it can be uh, socialist or fascist, and it can be lazy, and it can be stupid. And if it is any of those, it needs to be uh, gone. Because it's the law means everything politicians do or create. If you say because it's the law, that means that everything politicians do or create is always good and virtuous. How's that for jokes? Hey, we always examine the creative. We always do that on this show. And sometimes it has to do with uh, taking a bad rap and turning it into something better, whether for the community or yourself or your parents or someone you care about. But um, on this show, uh, this is comedy, folks. I came from a comedy background. I've been a comic for a long time. I, I feel like I was wickedly sidelined by this stage four disease. It took a little while to shake it off. And uh, not without much resistance from all kinds of people who care about you. <laughs> but... Uh, that's not always the case, but let's let's talk a little bit about our guest, and then we're going to bring him on in a couple of minutes. This is great. <clears throat> this is the comedy episode featuring comedy. Our guest today may choose to argue against that. Uh, against what? Against, well, he's a comedian. He may argue against that. I can't hold him to maintaining his position here. He's a stand-up comic, though. He is an actor, and you've seen him in several shows that he will be happy to forget. And to stay on topic, he does use cannabis. And he says he's been using it for quite some time. We'll get into the specifics. Andy Kindler is funny. And he knows a few things about weed and comedy. So that's, that's uh, Andy. Andy's going to be coming out very, very, very shortly. Andy Kindler, thanks for coming on. A uh, quick shot here. Russia says Canada's weed legalization is a breach. And we heard this before bunch of nonsense uh even if it is i mean you know we don't care i think it's a breach of decency and and civil uh civil decency when i say that but uh, these folks uh here they say here then the newsweek this is a big mainstream article here this is russia coming out strongly against canada's decision to legalize rec marijuana calling a breach of international legal obligations the Russian Foreign Ministry said a number of international conventions to which Canada is a signatory require privy nations to restrict the use of cannabis and other drugs to only medical and scientific purposes. Well, guess what, Vladimir Putin? Um, you can only have medical and scientific purposes for cannabis if you bother to uh, get it out there and use it and actually, you know, test it and monitor it and check it. And we're all done waiting for results that have been unavailable due to the fact that people signed on to some treaty of bullshit aren't able to get that work uh, done and into their lives so sorry about that Vlad yeah so uh, we expect Canada's partners in the G7 to respond to its high handedness because this alliance has repeatedly declared its adherence to the domin domination of international law in relations between states the ministry said in an official statement my goodness Russia doesn't like us having cannabis here in Canada. What will that do? There's always a reason why they don't want us to have it. Uh, everybody involved with it and preventing it does have some kind of reason for, for having it. But anyway, we are going to, uh, we're going to ding up Andy now and get him on here. And he's been, uh, he's been a good sport waiting around. And so now let's give him a ding. Let's give him a call. We're going to call, call him up. Here we go. Are we doing that? Is it going? Start the call. Gee whiz. What's happening here? There we go. Sometimes things take a while. Got a quick shout out to do just before we get going. Oh, it's ringing now. One ringy dingy. Hello, hello. 
There's Andy there. Andy, how's it going? It's Alan at the show. Hold on, let me see if I can get him. (laughs) Oh, he's not there. He's not there. Okay, well, I'll hold. Wait, wait, let me see if I can get him. That's my first joke of the day. (laughs) Woo! Right out of the gate. (laughs) Yeah, I don't don't wait till after the show begins to bring the funny. I'm sorry. Why would you do that? No. Hey, let me I get this out of the way. Let, let me get this out of the way before we get going, because sure. I, I meant to say this earlier and I forgot. And, you know, we're going to have a good time, or at least I am. And then and it's going to turn into uh, complete forgetting. And I don't want to do that. So um, we do have a quick plug to make here. Real, real quick. Here we go. Sure. All right. We're doing a shout out to Cannabis <laughs> Daily. Cannabis Daily rocking it to the uh, the bumpers of Moving On. Remember that show with Claude Aikens back in the 70s? That's what that music was right there. So uh, shout out to oh Cannabis Daily. Yeah, can you believe it? Claude Aikens. I'll talk to you about Moving On in a minute, Andy. Um, I'm oh, sure I'm sorry. We've heard I that be before. quiet. <laughs> <laughs> so CannabisDaily.co, they actually put our website together at Green Crush. So they put it together. They ran with it. They said, hey, do you want us to make a website? They've been very uh, helpful, and they're a bunch of great people. So CannabisDaily.co, go online, Cannabis Daily, C-A-N-N-B-I-Z, or Z, uh, Daily.co, which is, that's the same, isn't it? D-A-I-L-Y.co. And go check them out, and they have all the fantastic weed stories up to the minute. So, listen, let me explain this episode. Uh, as we know, we always deal with cannabis-y kind of things, and, um, and, and we do have a cannabis-y kind of guy on the line right now. This is a comedian named Andy Kindler. I, I've met him. I've worked with him. Uh, well, on the same show anyway. We didn't actually meet on that show. I think we're, he's going somewhere else. <laughs> uh, but anyway. You're the I, only person in show business who won't exaggerate. <laughs> I will not. I think he was on the show. I, I won't. I worked with him. You know, my favorite one is where you wind up doing a gig at a club, and then later on, some huge star comes in, does a set, and then later on, that comic will say, "Yeah, I opened up for Jamie Foxx." Uh, you know, a, you didn't really open up for him. It was a. I'll give you that it was contiguous in the time space continuum, but you didn't really open up for him. But, I opened uh, up for Jamie Farr. That's how old I am. <laughs> Is that a fact, or does that just roll out? No, your... it's not a fact. But I thought it was a good pun. No, okay. <laughs> it is a good. It is a good pun. That's a far. That's a long way to go for a, a far pun. Uh, anyway, no, I, yeah, wordplay is easy and it's available. <laughs> Speaking of available, are you lighting one up right now? No, I was going to decide. And I said I, the problem is I have. Ther- I mean, I hope my therapist isn't listening. Why would my therapist be listening? She's got things to do. I have to see her. I guess I could. I was thinking maybe of vaping. Oh, okay. You're thinking of vaping right now? Like secretly, you mean? Well, I have it right in my hand. It's easy. Mm -hmm. If I started to get my bong out, which I gave away in 1978, (laughs) uh, take too long. (laughs) You'd have to find it and clean it out. It would take much too long. Yeah, that would be that. Well, that's the thing. This is the one thing I cannot get used to on the new uh, world is uh, I'm from the generation where I smoked every single thing I could uh, until, you know, you, you, you wasted nothing. I probably tried to smoke seeds and stems for a couple of years before realizing it, it wasn't uh, going to happen. So I don't, this whole thing where like, you, where I see people dump out out of their pipe what looks like good resin. I'm not used to that because uh, it's only been legal here for uh, since January 1st. So, so I always uh, figure I got to eat it, smoke it, because it's going to go away. <laughs> you're, just, you're just scraping out everybody's bong because you don't want to lose it. Yeah, I out. used to think everybody did that, Yeah, but no, they don't. No, they're pretty dirty. They're, and, 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 I'm Ju- and I'm Jewish, so now it's a stereotype. So you're throwing money away is what you're saying. No, no, the, 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 the stereotype would be the Jewish guy. Oh, look at the Jewish guy. He's got to get all the resin out of the pipe. <laughs> is that the... Is that the stereotype? I don't know. I guess the, st- the stereotype probably fell apart there a little bit. <laughs> you know, and it's like Jews, you know, the, 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 uh, the stereotype is that we're, we're, we're stingy or something. You know, I over tip because I'm afraid of the Jewish stereotype of tipping. <laughs> yeah, so you over tip. What does that mean? Say, say you had a $40 like at least, situation. At least tw- tw- uh, one or two dollars over 20%, because then the other thing is. If someone's very old and they saw me on Everybody Loves Raymond, they think I'm a celebrity, and then they don't. You can't be under tipping the celebrity. Did everybody really love Raymond? Uh, they actually did, um, but not real. I don't know about that because they actually a lot of people call it everyone loves Raymond. 
So you have to say to yourself, if everyone can't get the name right, maybe they should. Well, maybe they shouldn't change it now. But it's, yeah, it's a bit know. late now. I just hey, I, I, Raymond's popular like that. Something like that. <laughs> I always wanted to. Hi, Raymond. <laughs> hey, Raymond. Nice to see you, Raymond. Yeah. Nice to see you, comma Raymond. Period. Now, right? are you smoking now? No, no. I I, I do have a, you know I have access, but I'm not there yet. No. I'm I'm just no, curious. No, so I, I just this thing is uh, some of these things. Now maybe you can help me with. I mean, let's not turn this whole thing into answering my questions about cannabis. But I notice a lot of the vape. I don't feel a thing from the vape. Oh, you might be doing Sometimes. it wrong. You might be doing it wrong. Um, <laughs> really? Well, I mean, yeah. I know this is things like. Dabs. I don't mean dabs. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get into dabs later. There's all kinds of things that You're just talking about vaping actual uh, flour out of a, some kind of a machine? No, I have that. That I have, too. I have a dry, va- I have a dry vape, a dry powder. First of all, I never, they used to never call flour before. Is this a new thing? Is this a marketing tool? <laughs> Would you like to see? They, every time I go in the pot shop, and by the way, I'm the only person who goes in the pot shop who is nervous that the people who work there think I'm going there too much. I'm worried they're judgmental. Weren't you here earlier this week? I swear to God, I have spent, my wife doesn't know this, but I spent $200 a week since January 1st, since it was legal here, on oh, in uh, everything in the, yeah, everything in the pot shop. Yeah, since January 1st, uh, uh, for no, uh, non-medicinal, or I mean, not for, for just uh, recreational, uh, it's legal, and I am so afraid it's going to be legal because of Jeff Sessions. I spent two hundred. I was spending two hundred dollars a week. Uh, don't tell my wife because that's the good thing about it. They're not allowing the banks to get involved, <laughs> <laughs> so she can't look at you. I'm laundering. <laughs> I'm laundering my money. <laughs> well, uh, I'm sure your wife's glad you're doing some kind of cleaning around the house. Anyway, that's good for you. Well, you know my when, my wife hate, does not like all of the uh, uh, the paraphernalia that goes along. With the weed, I I love it all. Okay, uh, well, let me before we get into how much you love things. You were just talking about no, you know regretting not cleaning out a forty year old bong, but I, I want to understand when when you are. Um... Wait, you can just refer to me as a forty year old bong. <laughs> that is not nice at all. How can I treat you? But like I have been cl- <laughs> I have been cleaned out. All right, sorry. You've been scraped. <laughs> the, the goo has been removed. Um, no, you were you were mentioning your. <laughs> You Did you say the Jew has been removed? <laughs> the Jew this is, is now... unbelievable. What kind of a, is this like a right-wing alt-right <laughs> cannabis show? I knew these existed. <laughs> alt <laughs> I was just trying to ask you. Okay, I'm ready now. Yo, I'm okay. no. And you're not even high now. <laughs> no, I'm not even high either. This is I may not go there because wow. Uh, I just wanted to know, uh, not just wanted to know, I want to know a lot of things. <laughs> but at the beginning of this, um, I wouldn't just settle for this fact is what I mean to say. Uh, at the beginning of this, you said you might smoke something, you might vape something, but you were concerned about your um, therapist. Now, how does, it, how does that exactly factor in? Like you're a bad boy if you smoke before you go to a, a session? Yeah, that's the, that's the thing. My therapist has told me she doesn't care what I, you know, well, she didn't say that. But she doesn't care how much pot I smoke. Okay. She wants to know how I feel about how much pot I smoke. Oh, no. Because my fair. whole thing is I'm judgmental about everything. So I assume everything I'm doing is bad because I had a very low opinion of myself growing up. <laughs> and, uh, and so I would give, off, give, out, give over my uh, expertise of what I, I would always be thinking that somebody is going to come in from the, another room and say you're smoking too much. And so I never really said to myself, what do I think about it? Yeah, so you're just always getting away with it. You feel like you're involved in a crime all the time, and then this is a guilt trip? Well, the other thing is is that the short-term memory thing has been getting... Now, I am getting older. People people are lying about it online. I'm not... not okay, indeed. this no. is uh, Alan but, uh, Park. You're on Green Crush. This is a live show. Uh, yeah. Well, just... Short-term, my short-term memory... I mean, a lot of people get confused because when they go, oh, pot affects your short-term memory. No, that's what it does. It's taking away your short-term memory so you can enjoy yourself for three minutes. <laughs> right? Is that what it is? Just wiping the slate Oh, clean. I got to pay these bills. <laughs> I got to pay these bills. And then, oh, maybe I don't have to pay these bills. Right? That's basically it, yeah. 
So, Andy, as a comic, I mean, when did you start? How old were you? A young guy? Or you must have been oh, okay. Let me just say one more thing. The thing that, so I'm wor- most worried with my therapist actually about being focused. Oh. That's the only thing I worry about. You worry when I'm about, in therapy. About you being focused? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, me being focused to talk about, to, to get my problems out oh, in, a, in a linear fashion. Because the clock's <laughs> running. Because the clock's running, right? I mean, you want to you wanna get your, you don't want to no, come no, out of there. Not, I'm all That's high. True. I don't know. I think I, I think what you're saying is go go there today, uh, blit, blitzed in a uh, lift. Take a lift over there, blitzed. Stagger in. That's what I said. Like it's Cheech and Chong three. <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, what I, I started when I was. Uh, I started when I was like I think fourteen. Oh my god, that's uh, that's around when I started. And then this is before comedy, or what? What happened? How did you? How did the well, two cross over and become inextricably linked? Did you think that every Jewish person is a working stand-up comic at thirteen? <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> is that not the case? <laughs> no, that is not the case. Oh, I was not. Believe it or not, at thirteen, I was just a complete fuck up. I was not a stand-up comedy comic. I mean, I thought I was funny. But there was no formal presentation of it at, at 13 years old. So you know you were. Yeah. Y- it must be tough though if you're going to be expected at that age and on, on that day to deliver jokes at your own bris. Oh, but you know the thing is, I, I'm trying to think. It was it like uh, I'm trying to think. It was like 14 or 15 or 16 because I used to exaggerate. I don't know if you did this. I said I had sex many years before I had sex. Oh yeah. I said I I slept with more women than I've uh, than men. <laughs> when really the opposite Bada is true. Boom, <laughs> zing. <laughs> so, okay, I'm two puffs in. I'm two puffs. What am I? Ninety thousand years old. I'd like a puff. Give me a puff. Give me a puff, puff will you? Oh God! So I've done. Uh, uh, this thing is called. Oh, I can't say the name of this, right? Don't do that, right? Yeah, you can say whatever you want. It's called Bloom Bloom One. Bloom One. That's the name of the machine. No, it's a disposable thing that you just suck on, and it looks like a cigarette at the end. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've had one of those. Yeah, it's uh, there's different kinds. Bloom one, huh? This right. one I enjoy. This one is working for me. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's in your hand right now? Is that the reason? <laughs> you see, now, maybe I can get... <laughs> 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 now, why am I coughing from the, <laughs> from the vape? Well, I don't know. Maybe you're, oh. this is. Are you telling me you don't get high ever from using a vape? Is that what you're saying? Because that's no, not... no, no, no. Uh, here's the deal. I don't get some of them. I don't get high from some of them. I don't get high from. And then the the ones I do get high, I, I feel it very much in my body. So it feels like an all body thing. So maybe in that sense, it's curing my OCD. Hmm. So you're probably getting some kind of um, indica weed at that point then. Indica's more no, I mean this even says sativa. This says this is a sativa vape. I think it's because I smoked pot for so many years. Yeah, that is the one thing I think is a you know people say well you should quit for a week or a couple of weeks and see you know yeah you should you try it. <laughs> see how easy it is. <laughs> you tried stopping, so I don't think I get. I don't think I remember the first time I got high. I don't know about you, but it was like. L- it was like a mushrooms or LSD. It yeah. was like my whole, it transformed my entire world. Yeah, it did, yeah. And I was laughing like a maniac mm-hmm. and eating like an idiot. Yeah, I was hanging out with some guys who were, uh, uh, they were musicians after school, high school kids, and, and we had, uh, you know, equipment. We had real equipment. And I didn't know how to play yet. I was just hanging out with these guys, and I was leaning up against a bass amp. Uh, you know, <laughs> really loud bass amp, just thumping away, and I remember melting into it. This was on my probably first or second time smoking dope, and I just thought I was I was merging and melding into the actual amplifier. It was so powerful. Yeah, my my friend my friend said the first my friend Bill said the first time he got high, it was uh, he was listening to the Doors break on through the other side on a car, and it's like I could really uh, I could see that I could feel that pulsation. Yeah. You could well, that's why I believe in. That's why I believe in God. Is is from my not just from that, but just from your friend from, from getting. What's that? Because of your friend, that's why you believe in God. <laughs> no, no, no. Because I had trans. I had um, what do you call them? Transformational, uh, transcendent experiences 
when I first smoked pot and in college when I did LSD and stuff like that, that made me feel like there's something going on in the universe uh. that doesn't uh, get summed up by uh, an equation all the time. Or but the, it can be. The mainstream uh, writings and offerings, you mean. So you feel there's more going on out there. So you believe in ghosts? Let's just go right to it. Do you believe in ghosts? Or are you uh, talking like No. A- well, no, I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe in anything that hasn't... Before, I don't believe in anything that uh, you could pro- you could see where the profit's coming from. Like, I was watching this... Uh, thing on TV because I, I was Netflix and I was like, oh, I, you know, I keep watching documentaries. So it's mm. a documentary about this guy and he said he took pictures of, of uh, aliens outside his window. And then 20 minutes in, I Google and this, this, supposedly the guys are, you know, it's all fake. So I don't want to watch fake little aliens peering in from the outside of someone's house. I want to see a, a, a real... If you show me a real alien, I'll see it. But then I don't think you can see a, a real alien by with that attitude. <laughs> <laughs> you got to check your personality before you can meet a real alien. All right. Well, but I do no, I absolutely believe that there's so many things like I had it's a long story but I had a premonition in uh, like a out of body experience before the earthquake in in 94 uh, and then this San out Francisco? of body experience it's uh this was like no this was uh the Northridge quake. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so was I was that? having, I had about five out of body experiences that I never had them again. They just stopped. But in one of them, I go to this like hotel and, the, and this woman says, don't forget room 431. And then that's when the earthquake happened, like a month later, at 431. In the room? In LA. Oh, I see. You mean uh, well, at, at that time of day? <laughs> yeah, in LA. So now, do I think, uh, does that prove anything? No, I, I'm just saying, I think that there were things that hundreds of years from now they might find. These other, you know, senses and ways that we can pick up stuff, like when a mother knows that their daughter is sick or that yeah. kind of thing. I think you know, there will be explanations for some of the stuff. Yeah, and and you feel like um, you might be uh, involved in that whenever you get high. Is that what that is? No, no, no. Um, well, for I stopped. I stopped doing. My wife and I both stopped doing hallucinogenics the same day. Uh, when you reach a certain age, which is mushrooms, and mushrooms are very unpredictable because uh, people think they're mellow, and they can be. But my wife and I, we took mushrooms, and we made the mistake of not going outside. We stayed indoors. Oh, boy. And it got, it, it got bad. And then we looked outside the window, and there were these kids, uh, like, dueling with tennis rackets. Or were they a foot from our face <laughs> in the room with us? Or were they outside? Or were they forty-year-old Civil War reenactors? We were freaked out, and we said we're going to watch TV. We turned on TV, and it was—I'll never forget—is Entertainment Tonight. And we thought the guy hosting was the devil because he was smiling. Oh, yeah. And and then at one point they had Babyface Edmonds on, and Babyface. They said, what's your new album like? And they said, people want to put Babyface in a box. And that's it. We turned off the TV. <laughs> that's the end and of that. we, we, we hard-knuckled it. And the only thing that saved us, I don't know if you have him up where you are, but there's a guy named Huel Hauser. He's a California show where everything is happy with him. What's his name? He's like, yeah, you, this is a farm. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> What's his... You you drive this car yourself? That's amazing. <laughs> What's his first name again? Huel Hauser. Uh, how do you and spell? He used it? to have a show called California Gold. Huel is that like H U E L L or something? Yeah, and oh, Hauser is H O W S E R. Of course it is. And he was born in where? In Texas? I mean, you know. Um, I don't know. He he did have a southern accent. Had that. That's interesting. Yeah, he did because he was like, "That's absolutely amazing." How is Hauser or a Southern? Now the I think the vape's getting to me. Is is Hauser a Southern name? Well, I don't know. It just sounds like you know Huel Hauser. It just sounded like oh something. Huel. That's yeah, right, yeah. Huel. I think it's Huel more than Hauser. It's, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, so that's what happened. So your wife, you, you say you stopped taking it with your wife on the same day. You both, okay, that's enough of that. But have you ever tried anything uh, that we don't really talk about this too much on the show yet? But are we, uh, have you tried DMT or, or um, you know, I any, tried any of those other the, kinds the of greatest things? drug I ever did. And I'm, of course, I'm hoping 
that my 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 life insurance man is not listening to the show. He's, he's not. <laughs> he's not listening at all. Um, the best drug I ever had, and I and honest to God, it oh it, it was the best drug I ever had. I took ecstasy when it was legal, and it was still legal in Texas because they hadn't made a law about it. So the first ecstasy that they got in in the late 80s was and that i think was the most amazing like they call it an empathogen you probably know all this stuff it's an empathogen yeah ecstasy wow amazing yeah and they're using it again in uh therapy oh. uh because it helps you look at traumatic experiences that like ptsd stuff that you might not be able to deal with uh Without being traumatized, and, it's, and not, no, I didn't use it for that because I didn't. My, I didn't get it from my therapist. Hey, folks, if you're uh, just uh, googling or not Google, maybe you can't. Empathogens, like an empath, you know, is uh, these are uh, it's on it's on the internet, but uh, like everything else. But I'll just tell you uh, to catch up. It's a um, it's a class of psychoactive drugs that produces experiences of emotional communion, oneness, relatedness, emotional openness. That is empathy or, or sympathy. So there you go. That's what uh, that's what that is. Oh my God! This is like, I I did not know that you would have. I knew you'd have more. Who doesn't have more information than me? But I didn't know that you could fill in the articulate gaps. Oh yeah, no, I. <laughs> this is how I'm still alive, pretty much. I just articulating well, yeah. the gaps the whole time. Uh, but I'll listen, you I'm like, are a scientist. I am. Well, I know about science. I'm not a scientist. You know about science, right? I, I, I know what's out there. Uh, but I, I did. But, sir, but, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. That's okay. That's my. I line. just want to say one thing. I wanted to say. <laughs> I said that on my wedding night. <laughs> no, the problem with ecstasy, and you know this, ecstasy. The actual lethal dose of ecstasy is not that much higher than the regular dose. I yeah. mean, it's three or four times. Mm -hmm. You literally could not OD on LSD. You could jump out of a window, but it's not. Uh, this is from what I know. This, it doesn't kill. It can't. It's like that. Uh, I think pot's pretty close behind, but there's not. You it can't kill you from taking it. Yeah. Ecstasy because it's not legal. You don't know what you're taking, and that's why. And I started to get shipments that didn't seem good, and I said, I can't deal with this. I just can't deal. Uh, you know, you don't normally have to worry about pot that you're smoking too much. No, you don't normally have to worry about that. The, you used to have to worry about any kind of concern you have about smoking pot. If you really break it down, uh, Andy, is that particularly in Canada, a lot of these uh, government um, and I, I would imagine almost any country that offers uh, state grown or, or licensed produced government okayed weed is, is never all that fantastic. You don't get a lot of great reports on how wonderful um, this stuff is well. You, you mean b beyond things like Marinol? You mean like they just where they're getting yeah. it from? Yeah, yeah. I mean the actual place where they're growing the again flower and uh, and raising it. And there, you, you know, there's a company here in Canada called Organigram. Now I'm sure you know the uh, the root word of both of those words are organic and gram. And yet they were caught with um, non-organic substances in their final product and then they made a bunch of uh, caterwauling about how well we didn't know that that was in there well it's not even supposed to be in your building and then the government tells you that's the place you have to buy it from and you have to stop buying it from all the cool places that uh, you know when andy kindler comes to toronto and needs to get some you can't buy it from there anymore andy has to be part of the canadian legal system and we'll have to go to the store and oh boy are you telling me that i'm not going to enjoy <laughs> Being able to buy pot in Montreal. I think you've had your, your last pleasurable time in Canada. Yeah, could be. Wow, I don't want to hear that. No, you just stick to all. the other side. No, it's okay. You just have to stick to the other side. You just have to say, look, well, this is not working. Uh, my a friend who's a comic who's married to a chemist, and this chemist, he said that he didn't work with because he said because pot was illegal for so long here, they don't able. He goes. If they're actually, it's a. He was saying the strains and the sativa and the indica is so. There's so much more they're going to learn now yeah. that they can openly do it. You know. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely, it's incredible. Is he right? He is dead right. Yeah, we had a guy a couple of weeks ago on the show, and I'm I'm still in contact with him, and he is a chemist as well. Alex the chemist. Quick shout out. He's uh, at Alex the chemist, and he said that. Um, 
I'm not sure if this was on the show or not or just after when we were talking, but they've got it to the science now where they can extract out of the cannabis every viable um, agent in there, such as, uh, you know, the uh, obviously the part that gets you high, THC, then the CBDs. There's CBDA, CBD, uh, different CBDs. There's different terpenes. Um, different cannabinoids, where basically he described it to me like we can extract every single thing out of the plant and and line it up like it looks like a pencil crayon kit, and they color code right. them so that they can wow. use so so that all of the properties. So it's not just like in the old days, you and I in high school. You you know one day you smoked a joint, you got really stoned, you didn't understand it. And the next time you smoked a joint, it was all in your head and it felt different. You didn't even realize one was indica, one was sativa. But these guys are putting it down to specific tendrils of, of using this medicine and combining them together. So maybe, you know, five or six or seven of those compounds would help you with your eyes, say, uh, like glaucoma or, or whatever, better than just taking the whole thing in um, on its own. So they're, that, they're getting it down to like a painfully accurate science, and those are the best kinds of science. Well, let's say my mom who has Parkinson's. Oh, wow. And she would never... She has Parkinson's syndrome. My mom is 80... Eight, and she's doing good, but um, she would never smoke. You know, she doesn't. I don't remember her pulling out a joint when we were younger. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't happen for your mama. No, not from her generation. But there's a and lot of so, folks that do, but, Andy. A lot of folks, older folks, do. I know. I've met a lot of do. people. You they get do. over that uh, stigma. But what would so so I would be able to find something for her to do, right? Yeah. That that because I I heard it. They are. Wait, wait a second. Is that coffee that's uh, helping Parkinson's, or is it pot? Right. Uh, well, right now. Yeah, I heard coffee. Coffee is very good for oh, it could Parkinson's. Be, yeah. Could be. Could be. Let me just get a cup, and then I'll uh, be able to think about it better. Um, coffee. I think there's a very. You know, I my life was changed not just from this conversation, <laughs> but my life was changed. No, I'm serious. I I, 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 I can't speak to anybody, anybody who knows anything, and I know from the words you're using. <laughs> That there is information I have contained information. in your words. I do have lots of information. And this happened to me when I went to an interview at High Times. And the guy there started, I'd never heard about any of this he, thing of, of this, the cannabinoids. and any. I'd never heard of it before. And then it all started to make sense to me. Because, you know, the general, the fact that it across the board can generally make you feel better. Then, uh, obviously, then you could see how it could be applied to different conditions for different reasons i'm not speaking from knowledge now you can tell i'm riffing no that's okay i love it when you riff but uh, you're dead right about it absolutely it's 100 um uh there, here's a lot of facts that people don't know this is a nutritive you might not know this at the very beginning of of everything if you want to go back to the bible or whoever wrote those ancient pages um they they speak about um god creating the planet and in genesis 1 11 and 12 and this isn't this isn't like a hyper christian show or anything but it's written down there by whoever wrote that stuff in the bible that uh that god brought it forth it's in genesis 1 11, 12 and 29 and it explains there how that stuff was put on the earth now if you don't believe in the bible i understand that's fair enough if you do believe in the bible you've got a really big problem uh, being a purified or so Christian and looking down on cannabis when there it is in your owner's manual for your use. This is a food. It's a vitamin. Uh, there's a book on that you should get, Andy, by Dr. Michelle Ross. She was on the show. Vitamin Weed. And basically the whole premise is this. Since 1937 or whenever the Americans uh, struck it out of, um, used to be called cannabis, then they called it marijuana by associating it with the uh, Mexicans, you know, the ancient, <laughs> that whole thing, you know. That was why they called it marijuana, to, to trade on the uh, America's already existing racism. And right. Carol, call it marijuana. Wait, wait, Americans are racist? Yeah. I can't. I, you wouldn't know that these days. This is just coming off the telex gotcha. in 1937. Apparently, it says they are. I'm racist. so pleasantly <laughs> surprised by Trump's he's, kindness. He's got his foot right on the on the pulse. Hey, who doesn't he hate? Let's start with that. <laughs> okay, so I'm um, keep going because I'm. Okay. I'm uh, I, what was the name of that book? Uh, it's called Vitamin Weed by Dr. Michelle Ross. There's another great one called The Great Cannabis Conspiracy, which is by Dr. Uh, Sam Malachi, M-E-L-L-A-C-E. -L -L -E. Anyway, they both explain in their books, and the, the kind of thing that trips me out about it is I kind of intuited this before I read the books from going down the road I went. 
But basically, this is a food, and so it was, just think of it as any other kind of food that, that is important, such as a vitamin. Imagine if in the late 30s they decided that, you know, citrus in any of its forms was, was a bad idea for you to have. And, and so since 1937, no one has had this nutrient called vitamin C. Um, and then if you right. get caught with an orange tree or a lime tree, you could go to jail. And, you know, I mean, it's not that hard to, to spin it around to that. And basically, you haven't had this nutritive uh, compound in your one body thing? Can ever. I say one thing? Yeah. You know, in the country of scurvy, I don't know if you're aware <laughs> of this, in the country of scurvy. They hate weed there. The country of scurvy banned, <laughs> banned citrus. They can't get in anything? the year 1000. Not even a kumquat? No, not the scurvy. Okay. Well, that's too bad. That's that's really unfortunate. I'm going to have to get a maybe cancel my visa to go there. But, <laughs> okay, I'm sorry about that. That's joke. okay. No, I'm I'm okay. It's perfect. Uh, have I, you had scurvy? Is that why <laughs> it bothers you? <laughs> personally touches me, yes. Uh, but it's basically you don't have this nutritive compound. So as a person growing uh, as a baby, not getting it from mother's milk, and so forth and so on the rest of your life, not taking in this essential nutrient. Just imagine any other essential nutrient, whatever, calcium, magnesium, anything, that you're not getting into you ever. So over the course of your life, of course you're going to break down in, in some ways. You know, I mean, and yeah, there's pollution and there's shitty food and there's all those other things. But if you don't have right. this, this uh, uh, you know, armored force of of nutritive compound in your body you can't really you can't really uh, expect to get through your life unscathed so once i started taking this in a certain concentrated form and you know catching up basically um i'm pretty good I, i'm feeling fantastic i i keep going in for okay. tests and it just keeps working so i won't be told it doesn't work i mean you could try so what is it what is the nutrient what, what are the nutrients well, is it the all the things we're talking about before yeah, with the exactly. terpenes? Yeah, the terpenes, the the phytocannabinoids they call them because they're coming from a plant. Phytocannabinoids, the uh, cannabinoids, uh, the CBDs they call them, the cannabidiols, cannabidiols, kind of hard to pronounce, but CBDs. Right. These are all the nutritive compounds. The THC, we've been listening to them tell us forever about how it damages your brain. Now, I don't know how it can do that when the science now shows it. It also, um, if it does damage your brain, that's amazing. I don't know about that. But it uh, actually kills the protein that causes the, uh, the, the protein that causes the uh, Alzheimer's disease will actually kill that protein. THC, the thing that's supposed to ruin your brain, actually ruins the thing that ruins your brain. So, well, that's the big tragedy is that because it was made illegal drugs and the you know because I read I read the Acid Dreams is a good book yeah about the CIA and acid and you know it's like that people like me when I grew up I ju I just assumed that everything was lying what they were saying because it was all just <laughs> propaganda yeah. and what made that's actually made the cocaine thing worse because when cocaine first came out. People were, you were, the word, not just on the street, even like in, from, you know, medical people was, that it was kind of like a mellower, it wasn't really that dangerous. And right. then people started dying from it. But nobody, why would you trust any information about, about cocaine or any information about anything when you know the government, their job is to lie to you on these issues? Yeah, and because it's illegal, because it's, you know, I mean, I don't do cocaine. I have done cocaine back in the 80s, and I don't do it anymore. I don't do it either, but no, I did but, do it back in the 80s. Yeah. I don't like, I think it's a bad drug. Me too. I, I don't care, but I also don't want to put you in jail if you do take some more. No. You know? No. And also, some people, like, have, I think it's, a, you, you know more about this than I do, but it's a metabolism. Some people, yeah. I particularly got very high from cocaine and then I would get very very depressed and then I was a 80s comic who was not making a lot of money so thank god I still am I couldn't get further yeah <laughs> thank god I couldn't get further but no that, and that artificial feeling where you you come down and you have to get back up again that's yeah. the greatest thing about pot is that when it recedes it recedes in a mellow way right you know? exactly yeah so this I'm is I'm telling why. the ex I'm telling the expert the ex <laughs> I'm telling Mr. Wizard things that Mr. Wizard knows. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I know a couple of, I know how I got me out of trouble. All I'm trying, I get my, I have to remind people that I'm not any kind of wizard or any kind of thing. I know you're joking, but I do hear stuff like this from people. And the only reason is because I personally was presented with a series of circumstances which suck and I was able to get out of it. And a lot of people can't. 
so uh, or haven't been able to. Uh, or don't know these things. And and if you don't know these things, that's okay right now. But if somebody else may be dying doesn't know these things, and he's only a couple of weeks away from knowing them, that's why I do this show. You know, that's why. Uh, but I do want to. I do want to. Do you want to? Ca- can you catch me up with your? Because with, I should have looked online, but I didn't look on. Can you catch me up with what you went through a little bit, or have oh, you gone sure. through yeah. it too much? I always assume that some people uh, have never heard the show before, so I, I, I would assume most people haven't heard the show before, just because we have fifty of them in the bank or whatever. But um, well, if I'm on the show, yeah, no one's heard of it. Yeah, no one's heard. <laughs> we don't know who this guy is. So okay, here's real quick. So so there I was, uh, you know, living my life, and um, and then uh, um, at at uh, the beginning of 2013. You know, I'm in this showbiz game, and I was try- I hadn't worked for a little while on, on television or, or what have you, and I decided to work out so that I could get a little bit bigger and stronger and kind of change my look and try this whole thing again, you know. And uh, during that time, I was pretty much the largest I'd ever been for myself, about 190 pounds, pretty good shape, and I pulled a rib in the gym, um, and, I, and I blame that on... Um, you know, maybe not working out uh, properly or or just a bad arc on on the bending of the weight or maybe I didn't warm up enough. But it turns out that the reason that that my rib popped is because my bones were metastasizing. Um, That's kind of like your smooth surface bone um, goes more like a sponge surface and starts to rot away. Mm. So therefore the the muscly or or sinew... uh, attachments can't stick on it anymore like a like if you put a, ma- um, a suction cup on a glass of water that'll stick on there but if you put it on a tree branch it's not going to stick on there so that's what the metastasizing was doing so there I was in se- what seemed to be I was in the best shape of my life on the outside on the inside I was rotting away from stage four um, so that's kind of how it started at the beginning of 2013 so uh, six weeks later I'm not where, where did it where did it show up First. Well, in my rib, I was doing an exercise in the gym. Oh, and, and, and I the, got you. The rib uh, muscle, or so I thought, uh, came off the bone because I was improper or I didn't warm up. Ah, that had you had that not happened, who knows how right. long? You know, who knows how you would have found out because you were feeling okay physically. Right, exactly. So, so six weeks yeah. is like, oh god, I can't work out in the gym. That sucks. Anyway, so closer to six weeks, three weeks, four weeks, I'm still hurting, and in fact, more so, and it's floating around my rib cage. And uh, so, so you know, then I'm over the counter meds, and I don't know what's wrong with me. What's going on here? And then uh, I started to go to the doctor, and I spent uh, some time in June and July and September at doctors of increasing importance, until um, <laughs> until later on they, they well I don't know you seem to be you know you're okay all, all your levels that we're checking, hint hint not enough level checking uh, are okay. And uh, you should be all right. Meanwhile, I'm deteriorating. And by the end of uh, November, I was just, you know, I was petrified. I was so scared. I was in such pain. I could barely walk. I was showing up at gigs way early and leaving way late. So no one would really see me walk around. I remember going on Uh stage once a couple of weeks before my diagnosis in November. I had to do this thing where uh, kind of a wide stage, uh, not as big as the Saint-Denis in um, in, in uh, Montreal, I say that because I know you'll know the size of that stage, but a pretty good sized stage. Oh, uh, that's the that's the maybe the one of the larger rooms I've bombed. Yeah. In. <laughs> so imagine a room about two thirds the size of that, and as I'm coming right. on stage, I can barely walk. Okay, so it looks like I'm an old man in agony. So instead of giving that up to the crowd or telling anybody about it. I make a big deal of it. I make a meal of how long it's taking me to get to my lectern in this debate. Uh, kind of like uh, Tim Conway as the, uh, you know, the old guy that he used to do. Remember that? Was this a CBC? Yeah, it was Debaters? a CBC. So I, yeah, exactly. So I'd come out and I'd do a little couple of steps and then I'd stop and turn and wave and be ridiculous. And I just took way too long to get out to my lectern and I was just covering. I was just... I thought maybe if I make it seem like I'm sucking up every bit of adulation and applause for way too long, that'll be funny compared to giving up the ghost that I'm in mortal agony over here. So those are the kind of head games. And then you do your show, and it's all great, and then you leave and go home. And um, But by the end of November, I, I woke up one day, and it was so terrible. Uh, the pain by that uh, is what I mean, that um, I managed to get myself down to a hospital. And in the emergency ward, they d- decided to tell me that I was uh, stage 4, aggressive advanced prostate cancer which had already metastasized into much of my body and five weeks later I was told by the expert that there was nothing they could do uh, that I was too far gone for chemo radiation or surgery 
Um, but by that time, I'd already been using cannabis oil and experiencing uh, a lot of positive results. And, um, and then six months later, I finally told my, uh, my prostate uh, doctor why I thought I was doing better. And he recommended that I stop taking that oil because they didn't know much about it and it was probably dangerous. The same guy that said he had nothing for me to use. <laughs> <laughs> so that's very that's really almost uh it's a little malpractice if yeah. you're if there's nothing he can do why would he well, well when i asked him i said is there anything else that could be done and he said no so therefore um i'm supposed to have been dead i'm sure that's why he imagines i'd ever visit his office and um i am going to visit his office one day with a camera crew and we'll have some fun Hey, if you can't get revenge, what's the point of getting well? <laughs> that's about it. So that's my little story in a nutshell. People have heard it ad nauseum. I've gone into particularly gross details here and there along the way. But right now, hey, listen, right no, now. Wait. Now, so when you go in, your your numbers are good now. Yeah, my numbers are good. Now, the last two times I went in, they were not so great. Like, there was one thing called the PSA score, and it was just outside of the comfort zone after 36 months of being in there perfectly and uh it came out a little bit again last month and so um i'm back onto a course of of taking the oil and we'll see next month where i'm at and my doctor now concedes mm. that uh if if everything uh, goes back in the box then he has to um or, or as richard uh, what was his name said in uh, all of me I'm back in the bowl uh if it all goes back in <laughs> then then i'm good to uh I, i'm he he will he has admitted he will have to start doing some serious homework regarding cannabis and cancer if I can pull this off. So we'll see what happens. Well, and it's been, uh, oh, 2000, since 2014 yeah, that well, you've been feeling... Yeah. That you were feeling better or? Well, in 2014, I had a great, uh, th 13 was my down year. 14 was my up year. But at the end of 14, um, uh, 15 started again and it got real bad again. And it was a terrible year, 15. And then I managed to get out of it again. And, and it's all because I had a crummy batch of weed that time. And the oil I was using was relatively inert. Uh, so I crashed pretty badly while the cancer was coming back. And uh, mm. but it, anyway, it's okay now, and um, I'm using this oil. I can tell that I feel great. I can, you know, you get a, a sense of how you're doing better than ever before once you go through something like this. So um, yeah. Anyway, it's it's something that I found because I was told there was nothing else at all. So sorry, I'm an expert. I'm a surgeon. You can't really get past me. I'm one of the most sought after people in Canada. This doctor kind of guy, and and I didn't feel like he was on top of things, and I found something else that works. So. No, well, they you know the thing about it is there's clearly the the problem to me is that if there's clearly only certain areas, I mean they knew about I mean, try, they don't know still don't quite know what makes Chinese medicine work, but they knew for many many years yeah. that it did work. So it's like you know there's so many things that uh, regular doctors uh, just they don't go they they don't and they want to have. Uh, Evidence, you know, double blind, whatever the hell they want. And yeah. if they don't have evidence, they don't m normally even want to look into a field. Yeah. But anything that's ever been cured before in the history of our world, you know, it's like I, I'm, I'm sure what, the guy who did penicillin, maybe they're like, stop playing around with that stupid yeah. fungus. Yeah, what you are you idiot. Doing? You're going to get that on your <laughs> socks and then we'll have a whole new problem. Yeah. Or no. how about the fact that, that Albert Hoffman, who's a Swiss chemist, yeah. Who, as you know, discovered LSD. Mm -hmm. It 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 uh, dropped on his finger uh, when he was yeah. working on a rye fungus, and he got high. high and he that's had what he a, says. He had that's a, what he tells everybody. Anyway, you know. That's what he tells people. He doesn't say anything anymore <laughs> since he's been dead. Nothing. Not one word. <laughs> that's true. No, no Tibetan book. I haven't heard from him from the Tibetan Book of the Dead. Nothing. No Bardos. Nothing. Yeah. What's Bardos? Well, that's, in like Tibetan, that. that's, in that? the, that's in the Tibetan Book of the Dead. The Bardos. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. I only know the titles of things. I know nothing. It, uh, it's like E Chain. I'm all over it. Yet, the only thing I've read a little bit of, because I had to argue that it was the root of all evil on a Comedy Central show, was I had to try and read Dianetics. Oh, okay. Oh, Dian, you read that? that? When did he, you do that? Uh, 2000, it's, uh, I think 2008. Uh, I, I, I did the Scientology was the root of all evil type of thing. It was Lewis Black show. Oh, okay. It was fun. It was a lot of fun doing it. And he's a terrible writer, that guy. Uh, I can't believe that, people, that he was popular as a pulp writer. His writing is just so awful. Sorry, who, I know you're a big L. Ron Hubbard poetry <laughs> fan. 
but uh, yeah, his poetry, sure. Great at haiku. But the book is just horrible. Dianetics. It's, and so, right? Di- yeah. Yeah. This is a Scientology thing. Yeah. I, I read that book. Well, I read some of it. I, I, I did a school, high school report where I, uh, in world religions, and I took on uh, Scientology and, and went down to the place in Toronto and went through the whole process. They, they hypnotized Ooh, wow. They hypnotized me. That I went in there too young. I needed to be 18 years old, and I was only 17, and, and, and I, you know, hang on to my little alibi, and I go through everything, and they showed me everything. There was a, a little office upstairs where when the, the eminent one would come, that was his office, and they had a picture of his little sailor's outfit. <laughs> I mean, he's creepy. Mean, those pictures are creepy. Those pictures don't make you go, oh, I want to join. He looks like, he looks like an evil skipper. <laughs> From Gilligan. Yeah, he it looks like if the Alan Hale was someone you would be, if you were scared of Alan Hale, and he put out a creepy vibe. <laughs> like a, like That's a guy, what L. Juan Hubbard. Yeah, like Gilligan says, I don't want to hang around here. I don't want to hang around here and sleep in your tent. I want to go sleep in a different tent. What? Mm-hmm. Has anything ever been sexy about some sea-going guy? <laughs> Oh, the la- the ladies love the nautical themes. Uh, apparently, they they say they do. Hey, just to get this out of the way before we move on, a bardo is a transitional state, okay, between death and rebirth. So it's like a whoa, yeah, it's a little place to hang out while you're not quite sure if you're coming back or not. And there's a lot of them. Is that who Bridget Bridget Bardo was named after? <laughs> and is Bridget Bardo the one who is now like a racist? <coughs> I heard one of that. those people. <laughs> One of the one of the the be- beautiful women from that time period is now like a racist. And well, it could maybe, be Bridget Bardot. Maybe. If it's not, I apologize to you, Ms. Bardot. <laughs> you like to do that in person, I bet. If you could apologize. <laughs> yeah, to her. well, I would. <laughs> Even if she's the racist, you'd probably want to apologize to her in person. Anyway. That's the problem. <laughs> That's why I actually was almost I was attracted to a racist. Uh, in the not in the in the late eight uh, when I was a, a, a wolf like comic on the road looking to score oh. and I'm proud to say that I was able to overcome my horniness uh, to be uh, by her racism so I couldn't I couldn't consummate the act oh god well that's you know sometimes when you don't consummate things it's a lot better than you think um, yeah, but you. Well, that's. Oh, look, you don't have to tell me. I've done so many after school specials. I told my wife I'd be blind somewhere in, in a clinic right now if I hadn't gotten married. You know uh, what I'm saying? I think we're going to save that. I if, would have had a Craig's, Craigslist premium account, is what I would have had. I thought you were going to say you'd have been blind if that thing about masturbation was true. Right. That's also true. That's another one, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Andy, as a creator. You're a creator. Let's tell mm-hmm. let's tell people that I mean, you know, people that listen to this show, uh, we don't do a lot of we don't. There aren't a lot of laughs on this show. We've had more. I know you're going to find this hard to believe. More laughs on this show than the last ten put together because we don't usually talk to someone who's funny. Uh, but um, as a creator, uh, tell people who you are. Uh, uh, I want to ask you about something George Carlin said. You remember George Carlin? Um, of course. One of the great. Uh, I don't know how you feel about him, but I think he's one of the great comics ever. I, 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 I be, is it the thing where he says once a month he smoked pot even after he quit everything else? Yeah. What did you know? Th- is that it? No. What I wanted to ask was he said something that was I, I'd like to hear about that. But what what he said was that he doesn't participate in cannabis in the greater mining of the material when he's writing stuff. But he puts his stuff together and he was doing a special yes, a year for that. 30 years or whatever it was. But um, then he punches and then it's punch up time. That's what he said he would do. He'd smoke a joint once the big, you know, the tough work is done. And then he would find little things that didn't occur to him when he was sober. Uh, that I definitely remember him saying. And he I think it was also because at one point, I mean, I know he he quit all drugs and then he had tr- uh, sometimes he slipped back but i think mostly he had abstained in the last years of his life yeah. except that he for that doing pot of course he didn't know you know nobody knew i guess some people knew then about the stuff you're talking about but uh because it was illegal um we didn't get any good i didn't get any vitamin pot that no, i know you of didn't. as a kid no but there's a thing <clears> going back to that that because it was illegal that is why this is the the ugly circle okay this the reason that it's well, you can't really put a fork in it at the beginning, but basically it is illegal 
Therefore, it's not uh, accessible enough without a lot of hassle. Therefore, not a lot of work and research can be done on it. Uh, therefore, the cries and the, the complaints uh, uh, about how good it is and how it's being repressed go unlistened to. And then they'll say, well, you can't prove that. We don't have enough research on it. And then you say, well, that's okay. Do some more research. And then they go, well, no, we can't. It's illegal. And then it, that's their excuse for keeping it out of our hands for so long and for not knowing these helpful things that it can bring to our lives. Well, that's the thing. I mean, you know, like we're going right through right now. I mean, I'm going, I'm in therapy twice a week and not just because of Trump, you know, but uh, <laughs> it's like, uh, the, you know, there's so much uh, nonsense. You know what? Well, I just forgot. This happens to me and you have to tell me what, what's going on. It's my uh, short term memory. Okay, short term memory really is getting, I know, but it's like my short term. Do you have any idea what I said 12 seconds ago? Uh, well, you were just sort of sputtering about how you were about to say something. Is that close enough? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Maybe that was 15 seconds ago. It's something about cannabis. <laughs> oh, oh, when they lie to you. Something about being lied. <laughs> the government. Something about the government. No, yeah. like Trump. What's going on with Trump? This is how I've been. I call Trump Hitler. I was comparing. You know, I'm Jewish, so I compare everyone to Hitler. Yeah. My whole life. Sure. You know, like uh, I would say that my mom. You know, uh, you know, this is from my act. Like, you know, see in the morning, Ava Braun. You know, <laughs> Jews, 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 Jews. Uh, so I compare everyone to Hitler, and I was the first person to say uh, Bill Maher is like Hitler, except at least Hitler was likable. <laughs> and then that, and then I and uh, Dane Dane Cook was uh, the Dane Cook phenomenon. <laughs> The Dane Cook phenomenon reminded me of Hitler because when Dane Cook got popular, it reminded me of Germany in the 30s. There's a guy yelling, you don't get it. All your friends are laughing for some reason, but you still don't get it. Except Dane Cook is worse than Hitler because at least Hitler had a point of view, ladies and gentlemen. And so I've updated that material to say that Trump is just like Hitler, except at least Hitler was a veteran. <laughs> this is a, and this is absolutely true, Alan. Hitler served in World War One, and he got uh, poison gassed. So I, was just, I was trying to get a little empathy going for Hitler, but the point is, the, tr I've been saying Trump was like Hitler from the beginning, and this is what governments can do. I don't want to get people depressed because I ultimately, spiritually, I, I'm like spiritually optimistic all the time. Spiritual optimism. Which I'm sure good. you are. You yeah, have to be. I am. I certainly am. Yeah. I'm not humanistically uh, positive about things based on what I see. Uh, we're, we're into the Kali Yuga at this point. But uh, I think that... What's uh, that? What's that one? The Kali that sounds like Dennis Miller. Oh. Kali Yuga, cha-cha. <laughs> <laughs> I guess... And let me tell you something about the Kali... Yeah, I... I, I All my favorite comedians... Uh, became right wing fascists. Oh, is that right? Who who else besides? <laughs> oh, Dennis? he's like a fat. No, I'm just kidding. But he's like a fascist now. Oh yeah, he's yeah. terrible. Well, that was during the George Bush times, right? I mean, that was during uh, George. No, Bush after time. 9 11, uh, Dennis Miller got a little uh, mean, mean and angry. And well, he was always mean and angry. But yeah. Well, the terrible. Kali Yuga. There, there's the four times. There, there's the four stages of age, like the ages, right? The ages. The they're called yugas. And uh, the Kali Yuga is that uh, the world goes through a cycle of yugas, and uh, according to the Sanskrit scriptures, this stuff goes back a long way. I mean, did you do any clubs? Was there a Sanskrit borscht belt? Uh, but they had... Um... No, I never did that, but I did listen to a lot of Alan Watts in oh, yeah. the uh, yeah. 70s and 80s. No, 80s mostly. What? Yeah, so I, 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 know, I, knew, I know bits and pieces of of these kind of Sanskrit things and well, what what's the religion it? that's based on? Uh, the, well, uh, let's see. Um, it's the, the Upanishad. Is this the? Are you going down the Upanishad? The Upanishad lane? road. The Krishna's departure it marks the end of the Dvapara Yuga and starts the Kali Yuga, um, which is which is dated uh, to up until February thirty one o two. So you've got a chance to get booked before that ends. Um, but but basically, well, this is, is the worst time where everything comes apart. It's basically it means uh, Kali oh. Yuga means strife, discord, quarrel, or contention, and this is the fourth of those times. And once this all ends, then it apparently resets and starts over again. 
Now there's your when, and well, like, how about a man who's uh, who could be said to be sixty, who, who could be accused of sixty, being sixty? Will I live to see it? <laughs> oh no, you're not going to live to see it. No, no. You're... Oh, okay, but that's good. I just want to. Pl- I want to make a nice table for people. <laughs> You know what? I wanted to say one thing, though, that's very important that I believe in. Okay. Is that I hate this. I'm, I'm sorry to cut off a laugh, but that's my whole act. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I hate the new atheist movement so much, more than like I hate anything, basically. Wh- because what does that mean, the it, new atheist movement? What do you mean? The new atheist movement are people like uh, Sam Harris and there's a guy oh. in. Canada, maybe uh, I don't know. Jordan Peterson is a different thing, but there's a whole bunch of, of, uh, and basically Sam Harris, and they're all basically saying that all all religion is terrible yeah. and the Islam is the worst. And it's like anybody I know who's spiritual. I'm not talking about fundamentalists. Right. I'm talking about people who are actually you know adults and have gone to a concert or tried to watercolor, and you know it's like. Nobody, I never took the, did I, as a Jewish man, want to sacrifice, I don't have any kids, but did I have an urge to sacrifice my firstborn because there's some story in the Old Testament? These are all, all supposed to be metaphorical or based on stories that go back so long. Nobody has, only fundamentalists and these new atheists take the Bible literally. Oh, okay. And it's made it's made me mad because it's made me like like the things that we're talking about. If you are just going to say, "Well, I can't believe the, any of these books that you're talking about," until you show me, pr- pr- it's like these are it's poetry sometimes. It's art. Yeah, yeah. It's like does that's the connection. And I just think, and I th- I don't think I'm wrong about this. I think people who are younger coming up now are actually less cynical. That's only from when I'm talking to some people. But I think people are, are maybe getting more open now towards, uh, you know, not so like, uh, you know, oh, that's an ancient book, so I'm not going to listen to it. Right. Well, I talk about, this is a good juncture to, to spend a little bit of time on because I do talk about it on the show, and I don't know what people think about, you know, I don't, I don't know necessarily if I need to care about what they think, but I do reference the Bible specifically for this. So let me get it out of the way. And I'll tell you why I do it. And, and I say it all the time because whether or not you believe in the Bible, if you go to jail or, or go to court, uh, there's a very good chance you'll be taken into a courtroom where the Bible is sitting, and then you'll be asked to put your hand on it and tell the truth. And, of course, you can say, no, that's okay. I'm, I'm a Muslim. I'm not going to swear on the Bible or whatever you are. Or I'm just going to tell the truth. But they do provide that Bible for you to swear on. So let me just refresh you. You probably remember if you're a Christian from Sunday school, uh, Genesis. So this is basically page one of the Bible, Uh, page one, chapter one, and God said. So uh, here's what I would do. If I was in court and there was some kind of possession charge, you know, if that was going to be a thing, and they'd say, uh, you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, help you God? I'd say, well, I do, but I just need to check this Bible first. Let's make sure it's an accurate one. Flip it open here. <laughs> and God said, let the earth bring forth grass. Ding, ding, ding. The herb yielding seed. There it is again. And the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. So that's one eleven, And then on 12 says... And then the earth brought forth grass, and the herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself, and after his kind. And God saw that it was good. So God thinks it's good. What's this charge you've got here, Your Honor, about I was holding on to something that God says is good? So basically, <laughs> that's, that's kind of where I'm at. And then on 29, it says, And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth. This would explain cannabis being in just about every country. And every tree in, in which the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you, it shall be for meat. And then you get into the whole vegetarian kind of argument. But basically, I say, like, if you believe in the Bible... Great. You have to now accept that these things are relating to this stuff is a food, it's a vitamin, it's a nutrient. I mean, Andy, you just want to juice this stuff. You want to juice it. You want to eat it. You want to make ice cubes out of it and put it in smoothies. You want to make little pastes and hummuses out of the seeds. I mean, this is the manna from heaven, as they say. And the more of it you take right. in, the better health. And it doesn't even have to be the kind that has THC in it. You can use the male plants. Think of all those stoner No, things. I want all of it. <laughs> <laughs> Almost did a spit I take, want all, you bastard. I want all of it. 
<laughs> yeah, so that's that's why I reference the Bible, and I think it's important to, uh, you know, if you were a Muslim and you had this charge and you went into court and said, yeah, I'll, I'll swear on the Bible, this Bible here that says this, that I can have this. So they, they've put up a lo- series of laws around it. They've tried to restrict us from getting on top of it, and people like us keep on using it all the time anyway. It's never right. going to stop. right. You know. No, and it's never going to. I mean, like, for example, they know so little. And this I only know from, like, uh, reading stuff, but they know so little about nutrition. So, like, there's so much, uh, you know, in all the cultures, like, where they make, you know, it's like, you know how in comedy, uh, as people get less bigoted, there's less area, you know, it's like people get cheap laughs in the old days from sure. whatever it was, Polish people. Yeah, yeah. But like, um, uh, I lost my place again. You know why? Because I said something about Polish uh, prejudice. People. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Polish people. <laughs> if you learn nothing more from this session. Now, what can I take to get this memory back? I don't think I have, I hope I don't have early onset dementia. Well, I was, what do you recommend? Well, I think, you know, I don't want you to get onset dementia either, but more importantly, I don't want you to find out that you were already told that. Uh, but what I want to find oh, out is... Oh, I get you. So, yeah. so so what I wanted to find out, though, was what you were saying, to answer your question, was that, um, you know, folks who have been using this stuff for a long... I say we're going to be using it anyway, even though they're telling us not to use it and setting up... Right, a, right. And that's where you jumped off. So I don't know what you were going to say. I know, but can you imagine if you had the power uh, to know where I was going with it? <laughs> <laughs> We'd be like the Smothers Brothers. That's how the Smothers Brothers got started. I'd have you on every week if that were the case. I, if absolutely. that was the case. Yeah. But. I think, though, I'm learning through therapy that I think what's happening with the short term. Uh, here's what's happening. I think that my natural state is to, and I don't want to start to sound like one of these uh, New York? artists. But, uh, artists, no, but it's like. My natural state is to be like in the moment and kind of like stream of consciousness. Yeah. And so I think pot affects that in a way that if I get freaked out when I like I'm talking to you and I know I'm on a podcast, I know we're not home, you know, like people are listening to it. Yeah. So it's a little bit more anxiety producing. So as soon as I forget what I just said, I get completely ang- it's like on stage, my mind goes blank all the time like i i didn't know i had adhd when i was a kid and i didn't know until i really knew i had it but it's like my mind goes blank but that's kind of what my mind wants to do it's more like the anxiety of me having to remember what i just said because i'm on a show well i've got <laughs> i've got something you can you can use i don't know how you're going to incorporate this okay so don't don't start telling me how this isn't going to work but um it's not gonna work. Oh, see now, right away. That's it. <laughs> oh, well, sorry. That's it. Sorry. Show's over. We're done. Um, no, I, I just want to tell you, if you ever get to the point you still feel like from time to time you're too high, or there's a problem, or a bit paranoid, or a bit anxious, or what have you, you ever get that feeling? I get tired. You get tired. Okay. I get tired, and like if I'm on a deadline to write comedy, then the pot can make me not want to write the comedy. <laughs> oh, I thought you were gonna say it keeps you up. No, it no. makes me sleep. It makes you sleep. Okay, well, I think you're taking the wrong kind. At that point, you should be taking a sativa rather than a indica. I think that's definitely right. because he, So this chemist was telling me that I told you about before. He was saying that the, 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 uh, the, the, the way that everything is defined in the sativa and indica is still not at an incredibly advanced stage. I no. don't know if he's right about that. That's true. But I do notice that when I stick to the sativa... I don't. I absolutely don't get as tired, even more than the blends. Oh yeah, you know, like well, the blends make me tired. Well, unfortunately, here the truth of it is, is that the blends are pretty much everything. Because if you have a sativa right now, there's going to be some indica in there, and if you have an indica right now, there's going to be some sativa in there. Ah, right? so it's a percentage thing. Yeah, so you're not going to have a full on uh, 100 percent one way know, or the other. Yeah, it's going to be hard to get that going on. It, you know, it's some of it. It has to be a little yin yang. You're saying, right? I am. There needs to be some yang with the yin. If I knew what that concept meant, I could probably uh, say something intelligent about it. Well, if you did, you could probably put it on your wall like a little poster. But listen, here's the tool I'm going <laughs> to give you to help you out because this. Oh, will, sorry. This may help you out, and if you, have, if you have a friend, and if anybody listening, if Andy has a friend, or you have a friend, or you yourself, if you've had any negative experience, um, perhaps uh, you're 
too high or you're anxious or whatever it is. Um, the terpene, there's a terpene inside the cannabis that's doing that. So that's one of the pencil color crayons I was telling you about that you might not notice. It's making you, it's making it more psychoactive? Yeah. Or, or it's making the psychoactivity, not more psychoactive, but it's making the psychoactivity uh, uh, going into a certain direction. Like you said, like, you, you know, you're more writing or more uh, stream of consciousness with this one and maybe more athletically inclined with that one. And, you know, like uh, athletes use it to train and what have you. But all I'm trying to say is if you get too high or you're a little bit um, not thrilled with the way the results of your most recent toke has gone, you can reverse a lot of that anxiety and or stress and or negative feeling within using the terpene in reverse and you would do that by sniffing freshly ground black pepper are you serious yep wow so that's why i said don't ask me how to do it because ideally what you would do is you'd have some you'd have a little container a little grinder a little pepper mill you know the size of your vape. right i do have that you got one the size of your vape no, but you know how they they have the, the these the, the these days with the with the like it's the Jetsons. They have a small thing. It's like the size of a regular spice container, but it has a grinder on the top. Hang it's on, unbelievable! A Are you telling it's me it's like a small pot grinder? Gee, is it going clockwise when you crank it? I don't know. I, I don't know any of that righty, loosey, lefty. <laughs> but the thing is, what you're telling me is so because I had a couple of experiences on pot. That were like really bad acid trip a acid trips. Oh yeah, that's what I mean. I this would to help get you out Really, there. really paranoid. Okay, so and I didn't realize the terpenes. The terpenes did that. Yeah, the terpenes. So I'm not exactly even sure if it's the terpene that's causing it. I really do think it is, though. And then you're using the old um, uh, vaccination. Um, you know, uh, the the the. What am I trying to say here? The the structure of vaccinations is a little bit of something of what you're supposed to be allergic to or whatever it is, uh, you know, that's going to that's gonna clean it up for you. But with, with freshly ground pepper, if you had a little container with you, threw it in your backpack or something, you know, in case you get too messed up or something like that happens to you, and just, now this is why I say be careful. you got to crank some in the palm of your hand and just lean over and but, sniff yeah. it without snorting it up your nostrils, and that's a whole other problem. I, I don't want to get anything to get in the way of my chewing tobacco. <laughs> <laughs> you're a chaw man, are you? No, I, I'm not. But it's just like it, I actually think I think of myself. That's one thing I think I could definitely avoid. Chaw? <laughs> yeah, I you, think don't, avoid. You, you don't feel an addictive tug in that direction. I don't have a hankering for it. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> You've been able to abstain but, the. Drug. <laughs> nope. So the thing about me getting tired. Well, here's the thing. It's not from playing baseball. Sometimes everything is how you feel about it. Yeah. So what I'm trying to learn through therapy is like when I smoke, I know that sometimes I get tired, but because I'm so trained to think I'm doing something wrong, I just let it go to that don't smoke when you're tired. But what I'm not doing is actually recording how I feel as I'm feeling it, because a lot of times I'll feel something and it'll make me uh, think I'm depressed, Right. but I'm not. And so, uh, and that's a thing that therapy is good with because you start to, I've learned that a lot of things I was thinking about the world and concluding about other people just weren't, wasn't true. It's just based on my own, uh, you know, my own growing up being hypervigilant. Right. Okay. Well, well, who is making you feel so guilty about it? Where did that all come from? Is that, uh, well, that comes from the great Jewish <laughs> goddess of guilt and shame. Your mother? Uh, I'm genetically. <laughs> There's a lot of guilt in my family. You know, it's like a, it, it just, it's like a, my family is like a, what do you, what do you, what did you, it, here's my family. What did you do if you came home and there was a problem before you said, I, something happened. What did you do to cause this problem? <laughs> what did you do? So that's why when I first took acid in college, I just had the horrible uh, thought of what if my parents really did show up at the door, you know, that yeah. story. Hey, we're coming to visit. So, uh, I come from a long line of, of panicky people. Okay. I can imagine that. Right. Uh, but now through therapy, I've realized that, so, uh, that a lot of the things that I was thinking are just assumptions I made. So I really am curious. Like, like I do my own podcast, and yesterday I Which didn't we're gonna plug all yeah. day. Let's talk about that, too. I, yeah. 
before we close it yeah, up? Yeah, I do. A th- now, it's called Thought Spiral. Now, Thought my spiral. partner, j- j- it's called Thought Spiral. Okay. Thought Spiral. And, and the fact that I never promote it is a bad sign. But uh, it's uh, you never J. Elvis what? Weinstein. There's podcasts. I forget I have a podcast. Well, I just sucked you into saying it twice, so I'm trying to help you out. I know, but I mean, it's like it's like it's like an, ignoring ignoring the thing that you do when you can actually when there's no reason to hide my light under a bushel, <laughs> right? So, uh, J. Elvis Weinstein is my partner. He's the co-host, and we co-host it. And because you're doing a show with with somebody, you do learn that you know there are certain things that I can get into an area where it's just alienating because I'm just spinning out and not remembering anything. Sure. So yesterday I did the show without having smoked pot all day. And, uh, I was more, fo- it, it was better for the podcast in the, in the focusing area. But I still think if I could relax more doing a podcast down the line, I think I probably could, uh, it's probably, my reaction to the pot is making me think I'm going to space out or something. Oh, so, I see. Right. You're right. You're right. Just keep smoking pot at, at every moment. Well, have have you tried CBDs on their own? No, I don't even know. What, I mean, it's like I, I I see that area of the shop, uh, <laughs> but I I don't know. Am I? Am I tincturing it up? Yeah. What, am I tincturing it? You're, you're not tincturing it properly. There's probably a salve you could do that is, uh, you know, uh, some kind of a. Did drug. you just say? See, this is the kind of thing. I spent uh, the first few weeks. I went to the store. I'd be like, I'll have uh, pot lip balm. You know, I buy it all pot uh, uh, salve ointments, um, mendicaments. Pot? Uh, do you do you want pot cotton candy? You're yeah, gonna, you know I do. You didn't leave out the liniment. You know did you? I. Now I have a thing right here. It says Kindred Spirit. Okay. Raw tincture. Okay. Well, one hundred and fifty milligrams of. Isn't this the worst thing? You have your own show, yeah. and I like a like a Jew at a party. Uh, and I find out someone's an expert. I go, tell me about this bottle I have. <laughs> Hey, excuse me, Alan. <laughs> Alan. It says a uh, Alan. It says 150 milligrams of cannabinoids. Alan. Is that good? That's how my mother. That's how my mother would do it. Is that good, Alan? <laughs> terpene. Uh, You're saying take terpene or don't take terpene? <laughs> it's like turpentine. Why would I want to take that? That's going to poison me. Uh, Ten yeah. drops equals five milligrams. <laughs> Total cannabinoids. Well, is what it says. See the thing about cannabinoids that you don't need to worry. The the uh, CBDs. You sound like stri- Jerry Lewis. Cannabinoids. Cannabinoids, <laughs> lady. These are how many of these you want? Cannabinoids. So the thing is, <laughs> you want to take it because it doesn't get you high, and it it will very much lead to you dropping that anxiety level. And I think very, you're right. It I will think very you're much right. lead to you getting a better rested sleep. Which also, you're on right. its face, contributes to to a lesser anxiety level. So you really you're want to trust CBDs. Right. Now here I am promoting this thing. I'm promoting cannabis. It would seem as though I'm promoting cannabis. And we have a law now in Canada. I just have to take a second. We're going to let Andy go in a second after we get some plugs. Because he's been generous with his time, but he also has to leave. But I do want to offer a couple of plugs uh, while Andy's on the line, we have to get this done. This is very important. I'm going to do this again with the moving on bumper because, you know, Claude Aikens, I mean, you can't you can't really touch this. He had a big green Kenworth with a with a white stripe down the side that looked like Starsky and Hutch. Every vehicle in that era had a big white stripe going down the side. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that was the clue right there that it was for uh, white people. But anyway, let's... Um... <laughs> I, mean, I lost you. Oh, I'm still here. Where'd you go, Alan? I'm just You're doing this. Okay, I'm just good. doing this commercial. Uh, marijuana. You're doing a commercial separately from me. I'm doing it. I've already started it, and you've already come into it. So you're already part of the commercial. So you know, just chip in when you want. Uh, marijuana. Oh, okay, I'll chip it in. It's really called cannabis. Those still calling it marijuana are still racist. But don't think by highlighting its racist history and governments lying about it doesn't mean. I'd like to believe cannabis can really help me and that it did help me and positively remedy my cancer. Did I say cure? Ha ha ha, no. But I'm not really I, I can vouch for the fact 
that you have not said cure once during the conversation. Did not. And a couple of times you you made me depressed, if that oh. helps. Oh, okay. Well, I meant to... <laughs> that, that might not take much. Uh, I just that's, need to... that, that's going the other way. That's really covering your bases. Well, the reason I had you on the show, Andy, is that because we have this law in Canada where we're not allowed to um, uh, be a famous person and put your name to it. So you know the way uh, the what's the beef lady, and then uh, we have Snoop Dogg here now uh, is involved with some uh, uh, pot growing affair in the country, and we can't have Snoop's face on the package, and he can't really talk about if it helps him, and he's not supposed to promote it in any way, shape, or form, and just in case I might have broken those laws. The, the good news is that you and I are neither famous enough to be breaking the law of using a famous person to promote consumption. So that's pretty- How did I get roped into your <laughs> pirate radio show? I just said I'm home in L.A., and all of a sudden now you're trying to drag me into this legal shenanigans well, I had to in do Canada. It. Hey, Canada, please! I have enough problems. Don't make it worse for. Don't make me have to prove that I'm not famous in a court case, because <laughs> that would be the ultimate indignity. Okay, we'll. T- I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll clean up some of this commercial in editing. Hang on, we're just going to close it out now. <laughs> I'm going to leave it oh, alone. Oh, wait. You can you can redo you can redo it if you want. I I, I was I'm just high. <laughs> no, it's okay. Here we go. <laughs> okay, here we go. Cannabis, it probably doesn't work. I can't really endorse it. But it's now available for you to find out for yourself. Okay, that's as close as I could get to the line uh, without promoting it too much. I like that. You I know, like. In fact, you're saying you, should, uh, you could even go more cynical if you were using Jewish marketing. You'd go, uh, uh, you know, what's the big deal? Enough already with the not trying it. <laughs> you know what? I I will don't try it. I'll sit in the dark without it. You if think, that helps. You think you're better than me for not trying it? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> think oh. you're God's gift to the earth? Well, if you ever All come right, back to, uh, are you coming back to Montreal for the Just for Laughs festival like you always do? Andy gives the fantastically hilarious State of the Union address, and he talks about all things wrong in the comedic and television and media industries. Are you coming up for that again? Yes, I will be coming there in in July for sure. It's almost time. It's boy. almost time. Yeah, that's why I'm plugging it. So you, uh, please go and see yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the funniest comics out there. I swear, I've known this guy of this guy for a long time. It's been a pleasure getting to meet you and know you on the air. Uh, hope this to- was great, Alan. I love. I'm sorry, I'm I'm a little bit high. But this was fantastic. Oh, well, I'm, I'm so glad you had a good time. I certainly did as well. And don't apologize for being high again. Um, it's okay. We, I'm cured of my moroseness, huh? Let's go up against the line again. Woo! You're pretty zippy. You're pretty <laughs> zippy. Hey, listen, tell everybody again this uh, show you have with J. Elvis Weinstein. It's called Thought Spiral. Thought is in thinking. Spiral is in that's where Andy goes. Could have called it Mr. Tangent. Could have called it all kinds <laughs> of things. But uh, how long have you and been doing it? No, what yeah, and there's no guest. It's just me and Josh. Oh, wow. That's it. Every huh? week. Mm-hmm. Every week. And sometimes we want to kill each other. But uh, it's just us talking about things. And, 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 and uh, so there's pressure because there's no guests. But I actually think it makes it uh, less pressure on us to be charming. So you, <laughs> you're, you're chastising me for having you on as a guest because I needed a guest to get through this show where you could have gotten through your show without a guest by yourself with, with Jay Elvis Weinstein. Yeah, but we don't want people listening to our show. Your show is entertaining. <laughs> our show is – each show is called a test show. We yeah. have test show one. Test, you know, we're working with the, with the government on a program to see why people are affected by podcasts. Oh, well, I'm sure you will get to the bottom of it. So check out Thoughts Bob. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. That, that was the best. That was a great get this guy off the air segue. Actually, I'm having trouble with it because I do know we have to let you go. You have a previously uh, mentioned appointment. I got to let no, you go. No, I have to leave for therapy. I have to leave for therapy in 20 minutes. Okay, so what do you have to do before that? Tie your shoes? Uh, I have to. God, if I don't get something, like I have a little yogurt. I got to put something. I got to put my pants on. But well, I. You, you may want to do that being the other late, way around. That's true, and I've tried that. But I have OCD. <laughs> And it's not a joke. I wish it was. Okay. Wait, <laughs> set I can get me some up. Material, no, some just, material out of it. I sound like the worst guy in the world now laughing at your OCD. 
Um, listen. Right, but it's really, it's like, like I say in my act, if they called it, maybe if they called it terminal worry syndrome, people would have more uh, sympathy for you. But it's like, to get out of the house, I have to be in therapy at 2 o'clock Pacific Coast time. It's a half hour away. But if I don't start walking to the car at a one fifteen, I'm going to be late because yeah. I oh I should wash this dish oh, oh what did I check this pilot light oh my god uh, what about the, my nest is my nest system working properly I, I think the scary thing is that you're going to check the pilot light but you have an electric stove that's the that's, that's the problem yeah that's why I went into therapy that's exactly why I went in I was confusing energy sources that's it. <laughs> This is very bad for a lot of people. You go in there bitching about the moon. Really, it's the sun. Hey, it, yeah. when you get out of your uh, talking about anxiety, we're going to let you go, I swear to God. When, when you are talking about your uh, anxieties or whatever reason that you go to your therapist and you've been going for a long time and you speak of this. Not a long time. I'm the oldest Jew. That, I am the literally the oldest Jew to enter therapy. I didn't go in until a year and a half ago. Really? Yeah, well, I just uh, started. This is new. You this strike is me all as someone new. that's been going there for decades. Well, I got that wrong. No, and I'm also on a pro, um, on Prozac. I never was on Prozac before. Oh, and I'm also uh, well. I can go through different things, but uh, let's not let's not get ahead of ourselves. No, but I mean, I like I thought ADHD was a fake thing when I was growing up because again, I just tell myself these things in my head, yeah. and so I didn't realize that SSRIs. Are very can be very effective for OCD things. Yeah. So um, and it has been very effective. It doesn't eliminate it, but it ha because I used to think in my twenties I was driving down the street and I hit someone with my car and I didn't know I hit them, so I go around the block and check that, and then, you know, I'm forty years old and <laughs> crying. That's the way it sneaks up on you like that. You hit and run somebody. Yeah. Yeah. A few decades go by. Absolutely. You realize what a bad fellow you are. Uh, okay, so 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 I thought there was no, I tried to tough it out. So just like you're talking about, just like you're talking about weed, there's also I am absolutely convinced. Well, I'm not saying anything new, but SSRIs, all these things that they're doing, these things, oh, maybe they won't work forever or whatever. But this is real, and so I yeah. wish I'd listened to my mother on that one thing because she said I I could be uh, helped by uh, by uh, SSRIs. Well, I wasn't listening to just going back to your the Jewish guilt complex, you talk about it a lot. A lot of Jewish people uh, talk about it. This going to the therapist that you're doing, uh, do you anticipate ever getting to the point where um, now your therapy is over and you're okay now? Or will you be suspect that you've been cured because of this inherent guilt factor that keeps you going and going again like on a hamster wheel? No, because I'll tell you, I know for a fact that my just and I wouldn't have said I know that my mind could be a big enemy to me in my life but but since therapy uh one OCD thing I would, I would happen would be I'd be walking down the street and I rub the side of my face and I go did that person think I was picking my nose did that person and then I, and then it'd be 30 minutes later and I'd be worried that uh something's going to come on TMZ about me rubbing my face I have been able to with my mind say that is not real you know what I mean? Yeah. And I've been able to, just by saying that, not go down those roads. It doesn't cure all the OCD. Right. But absolutely, I could see a time. I definitely could see a time. I'm sure there will be a time where I will, will say I don't, need, I, I don't need therapy. But my therapist is so great, and uh, I can't even believe it because I was so resistant to it for my whole life. And just the idea of finding out things about your, remembering things about yourself and seeing why you're... Yeah. freaked out or panicked it's invaluable did you have a little fear at the beginning that if you got everything sorted out you wouldn't be as funny anymore well i take you know i take adderall for uh adhd and i was worried that i would be less stream of consciousness on stage so it has maybe if i had if i had gotten help when i was first starting comedy it would have been wor i would have been scared but because i'd been doing comedy for so long yeah. i was a little worried that that could happen but uh, as you can tell from this conversation uh, my ability to go off on tangents 
<laughs> seems to be intact. Never limited in that in that area. But I, <laughs> hey, listen, we're limited for time. You've been so generous. Hey, listen, I've had a great time talking hey, to you, man. Can it's you really believe cool. it, Alan? I can. Alan, I have worn out my welcome once again. <laughs> I have done it at every party in my life. I've done it in social situations. I do it in the airport when I've been recognized. Yeah. And people go, yeah, I like your work, but I have to catch a plane. Listen, this has been great. But listen, I'm, I'm kind of hungry. and <laughs> Yeah, no. me too. Hey, listen, I would. No, it has been great, Alan. It's been I, I, unbelievable. How long is your show Thoughts by? What do you guys have a set time or, or is it an hour? It or? usually comes out to be an hour and a half. Okay. Sometimes two hours, sometimes as little as one hour. Yeah. Okay. But we good. try to keep it. Yeah. Try, don't don't get too stuck on it. We've we've been speaking for an hour and twenty five minutes now. Oh my god. Yeah. I, the show was a <laughs> half an hour before that or so. So um, I honestly. Oh, my wife's giving me the light. Please, <laughs> <laughs> please, please take it uh, from my heart that it's been great having you on. And that uh, the only reason I, I I'm feel going the same is way. you're off to uh, you're off to therapy, and I hope to see you again sometime. Who knows? Maybe we'll bump into you. I'm not. I'm not uh, headed to Montreal for comedic purposes, but I may be going for uh, cannabis-themed related purposes, and I may be tipping a bit of an announcement ahead of time without really knowing what I'm talking about. But you do that all the time, so that's okay. Yeah, well, keep me in, keep me involved. I know we we have to cross paths. We will cross. If it's not Montreal this time, it'll be some other time, uh, uh, perhaps uh, Vancouver or Toronto or perhaps somewhere down in the States. You never know. Saskatoon! Could be Saskatoon. It could be in there. Saskatoon, lady! <laughs> oh, God. Hey, listen, <laughs> All Andy, right, man. Kindler, you're a great comic, and you're one of my favorites, and I'm so glad you were, um, you know, you've ruined your life by partaking of cannabis and are therefore eligible to talk on the show. Well, um, this was very, this was a spiritually in... in Enhancing experience. I thank you very much. Okay, well, if you only remember to get okay, a pepper brother. mill, that'll that'll help you turn down your crazy high. But it's uh, yeah, listen to this again. I know I will. There's all kinds of fun stuff in here. Thanks very much, Andy Kindler. We'll Thanks, let you man. go and have a great take session. Take care. All right, take care. That's Andy Kindler, folks. He's funny. Now the guy was just talking to me for about an hour and a half, and you could have also just listened to him um, do a show for about that amount of time as well. Um, could have done that, but um, what's going on here? We have a ah, we've come to the end of the show pretty much. All right, we've got um, we've got Andy's recommendation for relaxing on California Public Television. Don't forget Huel Hauser. California Teachers Association, the California School Boards Association, and the California Library Association. Hi, I'm Huel Hauser, and right now I'm riding high up over the beach here in Santa Cruz. He sounds like he's riding high. Listen, we've been riding high. I want to thank Andy Kindler again uh, for coming into wherever he had to go. You know, probably his kitchen, maybe a den. Eh, maybe he's got a big place. I don't know. But uh, we will definitely uh, be back next week with a numbered episode. Not that that means anything to you, but it kind of does. Uh, my name is Alan Park. This is Green Crush Conspiracy Queries. We've been speaking with Andley, <laughs> Andley Kinder. I just fucked that up at the end there. That's all it is. All right, folks. Have a great one. We'll see you another time. <laughs> <laughs>